When it comes to living the American dream, a few animated characters have worked as hard to get there as American Dad Stan Smith. This patriotic CIA agent has proven to be the most relatable and the most infuriating character in the entire series, somehow all at the same time. It's really quite impressive when you sit down and think about it. So today I'll be going through his entire life, his childhood, joining the CIA and well, becoming the American Dad. I'm Lydia from Screen Portal and this is the complete timeline of Stan Smith. But first, it would mean a lot to me if you guys just click that like and subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm, otherwise YouTube isn't going to push this video, so go on, scroll down and tap that red button. It takes a fraction of a second, it's free, and as a very special thank you, here's a cute picture of a puppy. Thank you so much, and let's begin. Stan's Parents Although the show is called American Dad, Stan didn't have the best father figure growing up. He wanted nothing more than to spend time with his old man, but Jack Smith didn't pay much attention to his son. Daddy, will you teach me how to ride this bike? I'm in a meeting. He worshipped his neglectful father and was heartbroken when Jack ran out on a young Stan and his mother. Is it my fault? Stan, look at me. Kind of. Possibly to shield himself from the hurt of being abandoned, Stan chose to believe that his absentee father was a top secret spy. But to maintain the illusion with his family, Stan employed the services of an actor who pretended to be his father for many years. Not even Francine knew that her father-in-law was a fake until the actor died and the real Jack Smith finally showed up for the first time. Meet Jack Smith, my real dad. Say what? This is when Stan found out that his father was actually an incredibly accomplished thief. You're a thief! I can't believe it! I, I modeled my whole life after you! It was a hard pill to swallow, but it finally made Stan grow up. With Jack largely out of the picture at the best of time, Stan and his mother Betty were on their own. And so the two of them formed an incredibly close bond that continued well into adulthood. You'll always be my number one man. And you're my number one gal. Since the end of her marriage to Jack, every relationship she's had has resulted in disaster and abandonment. But it turns out there is a reason. In an attempt to prevent her from getting hurt again, Stan spent many years kidnapping Betty's new suitors and imprisoning them all on the same deserted island. And all this time, Francine thought Betty was the problem, but as it turns out, her own husband was a mama's boy of epic proportions. Francine, I can explain. She's my mommy! So much so that in one of the most particularly unsettling moments of the entire series, an adult Stan Smith is taking a bath with his mother. And that's just not right. Stan's childhood. Without a father figure to guide him, his mother feared that he would turn out slightly feminine. As such, he had strict rules about what a boy could play with. This may explain why Stan acts so alpha and macho as an adult. He fears that acting feminine in any way would make him less of a man. Steve, you're a boy, and boys don't play with dolls. Stan and his son Steve relationship can be difficult at the best of times. Are we having a father-son moment? We were. You ruined it by mentioning it. Steve is an Olympic level geek, which offends Stan's sensibilities as the manliest of men and a respected CIA agent. Stan, your son's a geek. What? No, no, that can't be! As is often the case when it comes to Stan, it turns out that his youth was a far cry from the lies he incessantly told Steve. As a young man, Stan attended Frank Stallone Middle School and John DeLorean High School. And while there, Stan was such a big dog, he made Steve look as cool as Idris Elba. Stan was a professional pimple farmer who was constantly pranked on by the popular kids. And maybe another reason why Stan paints on such a facade, presenting a guy his bullies may have respected. Stan's acne was so bad that he actually took an experimental drug just to get rid of it. 
and unfortunately the side effects of his treatment rendered him permanently bald. So the poor guy has been wearing a high-end toupee for the entire run of the series. It's a testament to how dedicated Stan is to maintaining the fake image he's created for himself. Stan, the CIA man. Stan Smith is defined by his job, and that job is doing horrible things to people in the name of his country. I just made a killing in the shock market. He has been a part of the CIA since the 1980s, virtually as long as he's known Francine. And by all accounts, he's a highly respected agent. He appears to be a weapons expert, as well as highly proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat. At the same time, he has been caught in a number of lies about his long career. That includes the fact that he never really has killed any of the people he said he did. Big Macho Stan is a killing virgin! <laughs> As a general rule, Stan's also incredibly unprofessional when it comes to being a CIA agent. Oh, it's a disintegrator? I thought it was a penis enlarger. He constantly takes CIA equipment to manipulate his own family, actually operating a teenage girl avatar to date his son. And he often places his family into a fake reality, just so he can watch March Madness uninterrupted. So, that time in Mexico when you and I went hang gliding and you told me you love me? Neither of those things ever happened. Klaus becomes a terrible pet. One of Stan's most pointless CIA missions happened in 1986. The CIA took out an East German skier to prevent him from defeating the United States in the Winter Olympics. They put his brain inside the body of a goldfish and put the goldfish's brain inside his human body. The CIA then ordered Stan to take the goldfish home, which is how Klaus ended up living with the Smiths. Understandably so, Klaus is short-tempered and remains to be bitter about his circumstances. You suck, Stan! I'd rather be dead than live like a goldfish anymore! And he can't even be transferred back into his original body because the CIA let it decompose. Uh, what happened to all the ice? Yeah, we needed it for margaritas. When Stan met Francine. The couple met in 1985 by chance when he picked her up as a hitchhiker. They accidentally ran a raccoon over, leaving it mortally wounded, suffering but not quite dead. Stan put the raccoon out of its misery, which was an act that made Francine fall in love with him. She said it was the most compassionate act she'd ever witnessed. And I got to kill something. It's not the most romantic meet cute, but I guess it works for them. Stan and Francine are extremely different people. He is a strict hard ass who wants a regimented, predictable lifestyle. Francine, on the other hand, is quite a free spirit with an everybody love everybody attitude. She certainly proved that when she showed Stan her sex garden, where she planted a rosebush for every man she slept with. You have a sex garden that was on the cover of Sex Garden magazine. Despite all their differences, the two make it work, and they've had some pretty sweet moments together. And a smith always gets his girl. Mm. <laughs> Stan's children. You can't be an American dad without having some kids, and Stan has two of them. Although they do seem to infuriate him most of the time. To be fair, he does love them deep down inside where he buries his human emotions, but they do drive him absolutely nuts and for completely different reasons. Now, honey, I love you both, but Steve is not a left-wing liberal who I tried to raise properly, but somehow, what's this? Haley Dream Smasher Smith Fisher is Stan's 19-year-old daughter and the oldest of his two kids. You know what I have to say to that? Oh, I thought I was gonna fart. But she is vastly different from her dad, hating all of her father's right-wing values. That was before I knew dad was a gun-toting maniac. Beatnik! Warmonger! Chupacabra! She managed to infuriate Stan further by marrying her long-term boyfriend, Jeff Fisher. Francine, honey, can you bring me my gun? Jeff, don't go anywhere. Okay. 
he is even more ultra liberal than her. But quite honestly, Haley is mostly only doing it to drive her dad up the wall. Stephen Anita Smith is Stan's son and youngest child. Steve rarely gets political, which keeps him from running afoul of his dad in that regard. But as discussed, his monumental leanings lie within the geek party, where he could be their leader, which often embarrasses his dad Stan. We have a real crisis. Our son is a geek. Stan has employed some impressively questionable tactics in trying to change his son over the years. One included becoming Steve's bully in a failed effort to toughen him up. You're a wimp and you need a bully to toughen you up. But Steve being much smarter than Stan turned the tables on him by employing the services of Stan's childhood bully, Stelio Contos. I feel that even though the methods are damn right mean, you can tell that Stan is trying to keep Steve from suffering his own childhood. But I think Steve has a pretty good grasp on life. Are we doing this? I think, I think we are. We're hugging! All Stan wants in the world is for his family to be as perfect as him. So, taking CIA gene splicing technology, he injects his family with a serum that will make them more like him. Big, bulging chins and all. My chin dropped! Oh, mama, get over here. And it works, but a little too well. They turn into jerks and push him around. Stan learns that his family's kindness is a balance to his jerky attitude, and they keep him relatively grounded. You mean my soft son and my lazy daughter make me a better person? So turning his family back to their old imperfect selves. I'm not perfect, but with your help, I am better than you. Roger arrives. Roger apparently landed on Earth in Roswell, New Mexico, where he was eventually imprisoned. Four years later, before the beginning of the series, he escaped from the facility. Stan was one of the CIA agents who was on site to recapture him. Roger ended up saving Stan's life in battle, which created a life debt between the two. How can I ever repay you? You got TiVo? Stan now harbors Roger in his home, and the CIA would, at the very least, kill Stan if they ever found out. At the same time, Roger's entire backstory is often thrown into question. Several flashback episodes have shown him in a variety of places on Earth in the past. One episode revealed that he had been on Earth as early as the 1800s. Accurately describing the relationship between Stan and Roger is difficult at best. Ta -da! Roger! Stan hates Roger, but at the same time, he probably is his best friend too. If you'd like to see the timeline of Roger the Alien, then let me know in the comments below. Stan's Future Like most of my timelines, I like to look at the flash forward episodes to see how well the characters are doing in the future. In the episode No Weddings and a Funeral, we see what the future may be like for the Smith family. When Klaus is finally sick of everyone mistreating him, he walks out. We then cut to 15 years in the future and the Smiths are no longer on speaking terms. Although Haley and Steve are doing well, Stan and Francine have divorced. Stan took the breakup worse and has fallen on hard times. I'm not doing as well as I maybe look. You look like you're dying. They are brought back together by Klaus's funeral, who faked his own death in order to teach the family a lesson. And it's here where they find out the reason why they fell out 15 years ago. When Klaus left, they had no punching bag to throw their insults on, and so they bullied each other instead. When we all make fun of Klaus, we get along. It turns out that Klaus was the glue that held them all together. At the end of the episode, the family come back together again, and Stan and Francine get remarried. To mom and dad's second marriage, that brings us to the end of the Stan Smith timeline. Let me know which American Dad characters you'd like to see a timeline of next in the future. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss out on the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.